Hi, my name is Tim Ellison. I'm W4TME, and I'm going to talk to you today about optimizing reception for the Flex 6000, affectionately called, can you hear me now? So how is reception optimized for the Flex 6000? So in general, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a, a set of techniques and features that come with the Flex 6000 series radios to optimize the signal to noise ratio. And you're going to hear me talk a lot about SNR and signal to noise ratio. And for those who are unfamiliar with the term, it essentially means that we are trying to improve the mixture of signal and noise so that there's more signal than noise. Um, just think of it as uh, being outside in a very windy, windy day. And if you're whispering, uh, it's hard to hear, but if you're screaming, uh, you'll be able to be heard easier, more easily. And, uh, and that's why that, that's essentially an, uh, a uh, example of having more signal uh, against the noise background. So there are multiple features provided with the Flex 6000 uh, hardware and software to, to improve the signal to noise ratio. And I'm going to discuss all of those. Uh, the higher the, so the signal to noise ratio, the easier it is to hear weak signals at or near the noise floor. And this is very important for people doing weak signal digital modes and CW, you know, DXing, uh, trying to find, you know, those signals right there at the noise floor. Uh, for phone type um, operation, it, it is important, but it's not quite as important because you do have to hit a certain threshold with voice uh, so that you can, you know, make it out over the noise. And so one of the key things that I want to walk away with on this slide is that um, when you're using these techniques, uh, a lot of times less is more. Uh, I've seen a lot of situations where, where people have, you know, trying to uh, um, uh, improve their signal to noise ratio and they've got all the features turned on. And, uh, and that really is detrimental to, uh, to act optimizing your signal to noise because they are specialized tools for different noise and you shouldn't be using tools that you don't have to. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the takeaway. So let's talk about the uh, different types of um, areas that we're gonna discuss. One is gonna be the Flex 6000, uh, the hardware itself. Um, the 6000 is direct sampling SDR, provides for a low noise distortion free reception and high RMDR or reciprocal mixing dynamic range receiver. Uh, you know, you, you can't hear weak signals if you have a bad receiver and the Flex 6000 is one of the absolute best that's out there uh, based on the, uh, the SDR design. Uh, in the radios, we do have an RF preamp and uh, we use a low noise figure preamp for improving system sensitivity and lowering the RF signal to noise ratio. And this is an important step that often gets overlooked by people uh, when they're setting up their radios, and we'll talk about that. Um, the AGC, this is like the, the silver bullet of noise mitigation and for, for optimizing signal to noise ratio. Uh, the AGC in Smart SDR is an incredibly powerful feature. It's got you know, uh, great capabilities, and if it's used correctly, uh, will make the difference between uh, not hearing weak signals and hearing weak signals. And we, we will spend quite a bit of time talking about the AGC. Um, there are noise mitigation features in the software. We do have a noise reduction, a noise blanker, a wideband noise blanker. And we'll talk about uh, the different kinds of noise uh, that those type of uh, noise mitigation features address and when and when not to use them. And then we do have some signal enhancement capabilities too. We're a, we, with certain radios, you can do diversity reception. Uh, we do have an equalizer that it can be used on receive. Uh, and this is a, a very important um, uh, feature in the radio. And for CW people, we have an automatic peaking filter. Or, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that too. So let's talk about the hardware. Direct sampling SDR provides for a low noise distortion free reception and high RMDR reciprocal mixing range uh, receiver, dynamic uh, reciprocal mixing dynamic range receiver. Uh, direct sampling with wideband ADC, uh, you, we are able to achieve a very low um, detectable, uh, minimum detectable signal or MDS and having a good Having a receiver that has really good MDS uh, characteristics is very important. 
along with analog device, certain analog devices such as mixers are nonlinear, uh, meaning that when you put a signal through them, uh, you're going to get um, uh, noise in, injected into the signal. And so we've done a very, very concerted effort to engineer our radios where there are no nonlinear devices in the RF signal path. So there is no IMD that's imparted into the signal. And what this results in is a IMD free receive signal. The receiver is in very, very quiet. Uh, you don't have the IMD. Um, where IMD uh, can cause some problems is with, um, with listening fatigue. Um, you don't, can't actually hear it, but your brain hears it. Uh, and your brain is constantly trying to compensate for the, uh, the distortion it's hearing. And that's what brings on listening to fatigue. So uh, our, the Flex 6000 are, are great for, uh, for listening and wearing headphones for long periods of time without uh, worrying about uh, stress or listening fatigues. Um, the, uh, the Flex 6000 utilizes uh, decimation to improve the effective bit depth of the ADC, which, is incre which increases the reciprocal mixing dynamic range and provides uh, for improved signal to noise ratio and performance. Uh, the greater your, um, your dynamic range of the receiver, the better signal to noise uh, performance you can get out of that radio. And last but not least, pre-selectors. Uh, we have pre-selectors in most of the models of our radios that attenuate out of strong out-of-band signals for better RF isolation. Uh, so overly strong signals can somewhat provide can somewhat desensitize the radio, uh, and this is most common in like a, a multi-contest station where you've got multiple radios that are close by to one another um, that are. Um, all operating at high power. So pre-selectors can, uh, can be very um, beneficial there. And so, so we start out with, um, with really good hardware features, uh, making the receiver, uh, you know, one of the top receivers. And so it only gets better from here. So the one thing I would do want to talk about is understanding the RF preamp. The RF preamp in the radio is a, is a little bit misunderstood by people. Uh, they expect that if you crank the, uh, the, the preamp up, uh, that you should see the, the noise uh, and the signal increase in volume. And that's not actually the way that it works. Um, what we do is we utilize low noise figure RF preamps, and it's to minimize additional noise in the receive path, not just to amplify signal and noise. RF preamps do not actually change the signal level at the antenna connector, but what they can do is to improve the signal to noise ratio of incoming signals. And you, you can visually see this on our radios by watching the, pan, the noise floor on the pan adapter drop. And this is true in all cases except for one situation, and that is where the antenna is noise, what we call noise limited, which means that you've got such a high noise if you have such a high noise level um you know at your location atmospheric type noise uh adding a pre adding pre-amplification uh will not provide you any kind of benefit so one of the things that we look at is that is if you enable the preamp uh you want to see the noise floor start to go down if the noise floor drops as you increase preamp gain uh, then um, you're, you're going to start exposing signals that are below the noise floor, which are not in the atmospheric noise floor. Um, and this is what I talked about, about not being where, where your radio is not noise limited. And that, when you do that, that improves the signal to noise ratio because you're actually dropping the signal, the level of the noise while the, si while the level of the signal stays higher. So essentially what you're doing is that if signal and noise are here and you drop noise down, the signal over here is going to be higher and you're going to be able to hear it. Um, if the noise floor does not drop when you add preamp um, pre gain, uh, then you are noise limited. And essentially what you're doing is in my uh, the example where you've got noise and signal, uh, when you do that, you're actually bringing the noise level up. Signal level always stays the same. Uh, so uh, you're going to be hearing more noise and you're going to bury that signal. And as you bury the signal, what you're doing there is you're lowering the signal to noise ratio. There is one caveat. Um, and 
this generally is not a, a detriment, but as you add preamp gain, you're actually subtracting um, the uh, you're, you're subtracting from the uh, the dynamic range of the radio. So, for example, if you add 10 dB of preamplification, you're actually going to take 10 dB away of dynamic range. For most for for look for people who are looking for weak signals uh, and trying to get that out. You really don't care about that upper level dynamic range where you lost 10 dB. Um, where you care about that is that if you're, you know, uh, on a band that's got incredibly strong signals and incredibly weak signals where that in that case, uh, you, you may see some some detriment. But in general, because we have such high dynamic range receivers, you know, you're talking about you know, in my example, 10 dB, you're talking about the difference between 105 or 110 uh, dB of dynamic range going down to, uh, you know, 95 or 100 dB of dynamic range. And uh, you can look on Sherwood's page and see that, you know, any radio that's got greater than 95 di uh, dB of dynamic range is, you know, uh, a very, very good receiver. So let's talk about the AGC because the AGC is one of the more uh, powerful uh, features in the radio. And, um, and it's, it's a little bit misunderstood. Um, a lot of people like to say, oh, well, the AGC and, and setting the threshold is just like you know, changing the RF gain in a traditional radio. And that's not actually true. Uh, the behavior seems kind of the same. Uh, and so some people equate that, but, but it actually really isn't. Um, so what the AGC does is that it changes the gain or the volume of the recovered signal so that you can maintain a suitable listening level. And so, so what that means is that if you're listening to two signals in the band and one is incredibly, incredibly strong and the other one is weak, um, with the AGC set, uh, you can actually reduce the volume of the strong signal where uh, that will make it a little bit more easily, more, more comfortable or easier to listen to uh, and won't you know, overwash out the, uh, the, the weak signals. Um, the AGC threshold is the control, uh, is, is the main control for the AGC algorithm. And it sets the maximum gain or the maximum volume applied under any circumstance. And I'm going to show a graph of this in just a few minutes that will that'll help clarify this. But since, since the noise floor in the radio is relatively constant on any given band at any given time, the AGC should be adjusted using the AGC threshold so that the AGC never applies gain or volume to the band noise, but only applies volume to signals which are above the band noise. In doing so, the AGC can reduce the ambient level of noise that you hear and help signals pop out of the noise. And this is absolutely true. This, you know, it's, I've, I've had people that, that have called me and said, you know, when they, when they finally were able to, to, uh, to, to get the AGC working right, they said it was just amazing how the signals would just come out of the noise floor. Uh, one of the cool things about our radio is that um, each slice receiver has its own independent AGC settings. So you can have, you know, you can be working multiple bands uh, that have different noise characteristics on the bands and each receiver you can, uh, you can fine tune and adjust for that. So let's talk a little bit more about the, some of the details inside the AGC. The AGC in, this, in Smart STR is a dual track system, meaning that it can track both slow and fast increases in signal strength and make an appropriate gain correction decisions based on the presence of each. And so not all noise or, or all signals that, are, that, that the AGC is listening to are the same. Uh, you know, you can be, you know, listening to, um, you know, uh, rag chew or, or sideband, um, you know, in, in the summer and you'll have lightning crashes. Uh, so the lightning crash is a very fast pulse type noise that, that, hits, the, um, that hits the receiver. Um, and so our AGC is able to track those type of noises as versus, um, you know, a strong sideband signal coming on the radio and will make um, the uh, and can correct and make gain changes based on the uh, the slow and the fast increases in signal strength and so this makes the um, the AGC a lot more um, smoother 
uh, and for and works better over a vast variety of band conditions. There is a speed or an aggressiveness setting in the AGC. You'll, you'll see it said it's set for fast, medium, or slow. And this determines how quickly or slowly the AGC recovers after attenuating a strong signal. Um, fast is obvious. Uh, it will recover and uh, re and change or, re or uh, reduce that gain change down quickly. Um, and then there's a medium and a slow. And there are advantages for using fast, medium, and slow. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, there is a setting of AGC off. And when the AGC is off, the dual track algorithm, AGC algorithm is not in play. It is not working at all. All you're doing with the AGC off is that you're adding a fixed amount of gain to the signal volume, no matter whether it's noise or signals, weak signal or strong signal, it's all going to be amplified the same. And in general, you never really want to operate the radio with the AGC off. Uh, there um, can be uh, situations where you want to do that. And one of those would be that if you're using a digital mode application that has its own internal AGC um, uh, capabilities, then you may want to turn it off so that you don't have uh, two AGCs uh, trying to compete against one another. So let's talk about some of the noise mitigation features. Um, what, what is RF noise or electromagnetic interference or EMI? RF noise or EMI is a complex waveform, which is a pattern, um, whose source can be either man-made or or, uh, or natural, and is generated by changing of changing of currents or voltages. Um, so that's the, the technical term of it. Uh, RF noise can have a periodic or a well-correlated waveform uh, signature, or it can have a random waveform. Uh, you may, so some examples of periodic uh, or, or correlated noise is um, uh, ignition noise, where you hear a pop, 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 that's happening at a, a certain frequency. Uh, that's a uh, that that is an example of periodic noise, or you can hear noise that sounds more like bacon frying or sizzle, uh, and that is a, a more random type noise or what they call white noise, um, and um, and so that's you know that's a th those two types of noise have completely different uh, uh, waveform signatures. Um, the different noise mitigation features in the radio are designed to address these different types of noise patterns. So if you've got a periodic noise, you want to use a noise mitigation feature that's going to take care of periodic noise. Whereas if you have a uh, high bit of random noise, uh, then you'll want to use the noise reduction or use a, you know, the, the noise reduction feature, uh, which is actually um, designed to address uh, more random noise. Um, one of the key points, and I've, I'll say this several times throughout the presentation, and, and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll, the point will make it home, is that if you use the wrong noise mitigation feature for the type of noise that you're experiencing, it can be significantly detrimental to your optimal reception. Um, so if you turn a noise blanker on that's expecting to hear this periodic noise and it doesn't have that periodic noise, it's going to try to... Um, apply the algorithm to uh, to signal, and that's that's where things start getting worse. So you just want to be very careful about that, and we'll talk a little bit about that too in the future. Um, the noise mitigation features that are in the radio. Um, the first one I want to talk about is noise reduction. The noise reduction feature is designed to address random noise patterns, often referred to as white noise. The noise reduction adaptive filter increases the correlation between the signal input and the signal output with the assumption that noise is uncorrelated and should be canceled out. So that's essentially how the noise reduction uh, algorithm works. Uh, we have a, a wide band noise blanker, which we call WNB for short, um, and it is an exclusive feature of the Flex 6000 and can be used to address fast rise time pulse type noise that is very broad banded in nature. Um, and th this type of noise can be uh, be uh, periodic noise from power line hash car and car ignitions. Um, the wideband noise reduction operates at the SCU level rather than uh, rather than at the slice level. So uh, it's applied to the entire pan adapter. And one of the 
the neat things about the wideband noise reduction is that we're actually subtracting the noise from the pan adapter itself. So when the, the noise, when wideband noise reduction is working uh, effectively, you, you can actually see the noise decrease in the pan adapter. You see the noise floor drop. And, um, and I've actually seen uh, situations where uh, wideband noise, um, the wideband noise blanker was able to, to affect a, a 20 to 30 dB uh, decrease in band noise. And so if you're talking the difference between, you know, minus 90 uh, dBm and negative 120 dBm uh, for your noise floor, that's a significant amount of difference uh, getting rid of a lot of noise. Um, we also have a, a regular noise blanker or NB. And it's designed to mitigate large impulse, impulse type noise and periodic noise. And it differs from the wideband noise blanker in that the, the, the normal noise blanker works at the slice level. So the, the slice um, um, is, um, is actually processing 24 kilohertz of bandwidth. And so the noise blanker is, pro is working on that 24 kilohertz with a bandwidth that the slice is processing. And, um, and, and, you know, it, it addresses, you know, periodic noise, just like the wideband uh, noise blanker does, but um, it, it, it will take care of certain wideband um, noise, it, it'll take care of certain uh, periodic type noises that the wideband noise blanker can't be, uh, can't, can't take out. The good thing is, is that you can actually use uh, any of these um, noise mitigation features in concert with one another. So if you've got a mixture of, of periodic noise and pulse noise, you know, using the, the noise blanker and the noise reduction together uh, may provide you some additional benefits. So there are also some enhancement features um, that are within Smart SDR that can be used. And uh, one of those is utilizing the, the equalizer. Um, I know some, some of our hams out there um, uh, suffer from, uh, from, from hearing loss, fre certain frequencies, what we call frequency-specific sonoral hearing loss. And you can actually use the receive EQ to help increase frequencies where you may have some, some hearing loss in those areas. Um, so utilizing the EQ on receive can, can help. Uh, and this can be used in any kind of uh, for, for CW and for phone modes. Uh, there is an automatic peaking filter or APF. Um, this is this filter is available when operating CW, and it's a peaking filter. And what it does is that um, at the frequency of your side tone, uh, which is where you're zero beating in the um, the the signal that you're listening to, uh, we have a peaking filter that actually um, increases the gain uh, and and um, and puts a kind of a a, a what, what would be the, uh, the inverse of a notch filter uh, there onto that signal uh, to help uh, bring that signal out of the noise. The other thing that we, the other feature that's in the radio um, that we have is uh, stereo um, diversity, uh, diversity reception. Now this feature is only capable in dual SCU radios. So it's only available in the Flex 6700 or the Flex 6000, 6000 M series radios that are dual SCUs. And how this feature works is that uh, you have two independent receivers with two independent antennas, and you're, you're receiving the same signal on both receivers at the same time, and you're mixing their audio together. And you mix the audio, you, you mix the audio together, but you pan it out so that the that one receiver is in one ear, one receiver is in the other ear. And, um, and what that helps with is primarily with selective fading. If one antenna receiver combination is hearing the signal a little bit better than the other um, antenna receiver combination, then your brain will be able to listen to both of those and will, will pick the ear where it's got the predominantly better signal. Um, uh, signal to noise ratio. And so that's, that's one way um, that you can, uh, you can use diversity reception for increasing SNR. So how do we do all this? I've talked about the different features and capabilities in the software. So let's get down to the, the nitty gritty and talk about actually how we do this. And it's a very simple process. There's, there's essentially four steps that you go through and, um, and, while this might seem kind of complicated uh, and everything, 
once you do this four or five, six times, uh, it becomes incredibly second nature and it doesn't take very long to do it all. Um, and so, it, it, you know, at the beginning, it will take you a little bit of time to get your radio set up. But um, but once you see the benefits of it and you do it um, long enough, you, you, you know, you're going to gain what we call muscle memory <laughs> uh, where you'll be able to, uh, to set the AGC rather quickly. So step one in the radio is that we want to make sure that the the receiver, the hardware is optimized for uh, signal to noise ratio first. And we do that by setting the RF preamp for the current band conditions and antenna system. Uh, you may have high gain antennas or low gain antennas, uh, which will, you know, require different types of, of uh, RF preamp type settings. And also the bands, you know, if you're up on, you know, 10 meters or six meters where band noise is fairly low, um, and, um, versus, um, uh, you know, down at, you know, 80 or 160 meters where band noise can be incredibly high, you're going to have two, two sets of very different preamp settings for those types of band conditions. The second step, and this is actually the, the most important step in the process is select the AGC aggressiveness and properly set the AGC threshold or the AGCT. And I, Put a little thing in here that this is the most important step and it truly is um, once you've gotten the preamp set and the agc set uh, that's going to take care of about 80 85 to 100 percent of your your noise issues or optimizing uh reception uh it's at this point that you're going to want to try using uh, some of the noise mitigation techniques uh the noise blanker uh the noise reduction the wideband noise um blanker um, and see if that helps um, improve your signal to noise ratio. There are certain times where, you know, you can try these things and they're not going to work. And that's OK. I mean, it's just it means that, you know, the type of noise that you're hearing uh, is not the, the type of noise that um, that these features necessarily will uh, will improve. Now, I, I will like to say that, you know, that. You know, there is no magic bullet here where you're going to set this and then all of a sudden all the band noise goes away and all you're going to hear is, you know, full quieting, uh, you know, single side band on 20 meters. It's just not going to work like that. Uh, you know, the, the demodulation modes, there's always noise there. Uh, so, you, you know, you're never going to you're going to hear that unless you're, you know, operating digital voice or uh, a different kind of demodulation mode. So just we just want to get that expectation out of the way. Uh, the last thing you want to do um, once you set the, the first three steps up is to see if um, if any of the signal enhancement is needed um, with by using the EQ or on CW, the APF, uh, or if you want to use, you know, if you've got the, the correct setup for diversity, uh, to use diversity reception. So now that we've gone through the four steps, let's go through each one of them uh, individually and talk about them in a little bit more detail. Adjusting the preamp. Selecting the preamp is not a set and forget step. Changing band conditions, especially at the lower RF, frequency, lower RF frequencies, will require readjustment of the radio. Um, in general, no preamp RF application is normally needed on most of the HF bands due to environmental and atmospheric noise being the predominant type of noise at your QTHs versus uh, the internal radio noise. And so, uh, you know, you, you can, uh, you, you can, you know, set, you, you, you'll, you'll go through the process of, of setting the RF preamp. There's a procedure we're going to talk about here in just a second, but it, just in general to know that, um, you know, as you're, op, you know, operating higher in frequency, uh, that's really where the, the RF preamp, uh, really, you know, it's going to show you the most benefit. Um, so some rules of thumb here with the with the RF uh, preamp. If you increase the RF preamp gain and the noise floor in your pan adapter visibly drops down, uh, then you have improved the signal to noise ratio and the ability to pull weak signals out of the noise. If you add 10 dB of attenuation to your noise floor and the signal does not rise, then that means that your noise figure is well below the atmospheric noise. By adding 10 dB of attenuation, you've actually added 10, an additional 10 B, dB of dynamic range. Now, where the attenuation uh, can be a benefit is, again, on those low bands, 160, 80 meters, when there's a high noise level. Sometimes attenuating that noise out uh, will give you better dynamic range and, and will you know, optimize the signal to noise ratio uh, for reception on those bands. So 
this is the steps uh, to uh, to adjust the preamp. Uh, you're going to use your slice uh, S meter, and you're going to change it into DBM mode because you're going you're going to want to a uh, a, a meter that's got a little bit more um, accuracy, uh, or not not accuracy, excuse me, a little bit more precision, uh, so that you can see the differences um, in the changes that you're going to be make, making. So the first thing you want to do is disable all the noise mitigation. Turn off the noise blanker, the wideband uh, uh, noise blanker, the noise reduction, APF, turn all of that off. You don't want that affecting um, the, uh, the, the um, RF preamp um, behavior here. Tune to a portion of band where there are no signals so that you're only hearing the noise floor. Disconnect the antenna. Uh, you can either do that physically by, you know, changing your antenna switch to disconnect it, or you can just change the, the receive antenna on the slice uh, to a antenna port that does not have an antenna connected to it. So with an antenna disconnected, you're going to want to read off the S meter and get your DBM reading. So then you're going to go back and you're going to switch your antenna back on. Um, and you're going to notice that there is going to be a change uh, in the signal strength. Your signal strength is going to go up because you're adding an antenna that's bringing signal in. What you ideally want to see is the difference between no antenna connected and your antenna connected with no signals on the band is about an 8 to 10 dB increase uh, in signal. And you basically you're going to be looking at your S meter for that. Um, so if you, you know, add, you know, 10 dB of, of gain and you see that, that drop, that, um, you know, the, the signal drop, uh, you know, eight to, or no, excuse me, you see the signal increase uh, eight to 10 dB when you add the, when you add the, end, the antenna on, you've hit the number. If you're not quite there yet, you can keep adding gain uh, until you see the difference between the antenna disconnected and the antenna connected, where you see that eight to 10 dB differential. Um, there's a lot of times where at zero dB, you're going to make the change and, you know, and you're going to see it immediately. And that in basically indicates that um, that you're you're fairly noise limited and you don't need any of the RF preamp. So we get down to it. Uh, if the signal level at the antenna connector goes up significantly by more than 10 dB, you have too much gain. You need to reduce your RF preamp gain. Uh, if the signal goes up by much less than 8 dB, then you need more gain. So, like I said, you just play around with the uh, the, the gain settings on the RF gain uh, until you hit that that uh, eight to ten dB difference between the antenna being connected and disconnected. So, once you've set that the the RF preamp, in general, uh, you know if you're if you're sitting down for the evening um, and um, and you don't hear a lot of changes. Uh, in the band conditions, it doesn't get noisier or quieter. Uh, then you can pretty well leave the AG, leave the the uh, the preamp alone. Uh, but if you do notice that band conditions are changing, uh, you know you may want to just jump back and 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 rerun that calculate or rerun that process again uh, real quickly just to make sure that you stay you know op your your preamp stays optimized for the band conditions. So now that we've got the preamp done, we're going to talk about the AGC and. I put this in red so that it would stand out and properly adjusting the AGC is the most important step and it's the most powerful noise mitigation feature uh, that's, that is in the radio. And primarily most people, uh, when they're receiving, the noise they're hearing is atmospheric noise. It's band noise. Um, occasionally, you know, you'll be you know, overwhelmed with man-made uh, or man-made noise, but primarily most of it is atmospheric. And the AGC threshold um, setting the AGC threshold correctly will help mitigate that type of atmospheric noise. So the first thing you want to do is you want to set the AGC speed or aggressiveness mode, which is fast, medium, or slow. And whether how you set this really depends on uh, a couple of things. And the if you're listening to um, you know, a loud voice or rag chew or things like this, you may want to use AGC slow so that it will resist increasing the gain between syllables. Um, and, um, and it keeps more of an even kind of keel uh, uh, volume uh, with, with what's going on. Um, the AGC slow is also preferred for high signal to noise ratio. 
um, conditions on quiet bands. So um, uh, I primarily, when I'm operating, I'm usually switching between, uh, between medium and slow most of the time. Occasionally I'll, I'll use fast. Um, fast and medium provide a faster level of recovery for situations where you want the system to follow more closely, to follow more closely the dominant signal on the pass band. And this is preferred in more noisier conditions. If you have a, a higher band noise in, in general, uh, you might want to use the, um, uh, the, the, um, the medium or the high um, uh, AGC setting. So that's a pretty quick thing. You know, you just set that, uh, you know, based on, you know, the, the overall you know, operating conditions you're experiencing at that time. So now we get to uh, setting the threshold and setting the AGC threshold is some very, 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 very important. And, uh, and this is where all the magic happens really. And so uh, it's a, it's a pretty simple uh, procedure for doing this. Uh, again, we're going to want to take the receiver. Uh, we're going to tune to an area where there's no signals, where all you're hearing is just the band noise. Um, so, you know, tune to that quiet spot uh, where you can only hear the noise floor. Then starting with the AGC threshold value somewhere about the midpoint, and 50 is, is not a bad point to start, you want to start to adjust the AGC T slider slowly to the left or at you lower values uh, for lower gain. And you want to make the adjustment slowly and make, wait a bit, excuse me, and, uh, and then listen for the, for the volume change. And so what you're going to do is you're going to start decreasing the AGC threshold, go down and down and down and down and down until you start to hear uh, the noise not being amplified. So the noise is going to get quieter. Um, and what you're listening for is, is a basically about a 50% uh, a, a reduction uh, or a 3 dB noise um, d decrease in noise volume. And you just hear that through your ear. Um, and to, until you, you know, you, you're at a point where you're hearing about half the amount of noise volume that you heard before. And when you get to that point, that's, that's pretty close to the, to the AGC knee. Um, and that's, that's essentially where you want to, that, that's the point that you want to be at. So once you find the threshold where the band noise starts to decrease, this is called the sweet spot. And, um, and depending on the AGC conditions, you know, that number can be, you know, anywhere between 35, 45. Um, once you get below about 25, you may have to add some some actual volume uh, to your uh, to your radio to compensate for the for the um, the decrease in, in band noise. Um, you know, I'll give you a, a perfect example on on at my Q8, QTH on six meters. I've got a really, really low noise floor um, with my preamp set correctly, my noise floor is about somewhere in the neighborhood of 100, negative 140 dBm, and it's very quiet. My AGC setting uh, is somewhere, it sits somewhere between 18 and 19 uh, at that level. Uh, so, you know, you can have very low, uh, you know, AGC threshold settings. And, uh, and to compensate for the lower volume, I just, you know, I just turned up the volume on the radio. Um, so once you found that sweet spot, then you just basically tune the receiver back to where there's signals present and that's it. Uh, in general, uh, if the noise floor is not changing very often, um, then, you know, once you set the AGC, um, T it, it's fine. Now, when you change bands, you're going to want to readjust the AGC threshold. Um, or if band or if band conditions change rapidly, you'll 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 want to reset the AGC threshold. But in general, once you set it, you know you can operate for a couple of hours without having to to worry too much about changing it. So I want to do a, a kind of a, a a graphical kind of description of of what we're what we're doing here. And so in this graph here. You're going to see this dotted line that's down here in the middle of the noise floor, and so that is the 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 bottom or the base of the um, of of where the AGC operates. And any any signal level above that dotted line, the AGC is going to amplify that signal. And anything ab ab below the solid yellow line, that's the maximum uh, AGC. Um, uh, setting. And so anything above that is not going to be amplified. 
And so as you see in this graph, this is set incorrectly because we've got this, we've got the, the minimum setting way down in this noise. So from the, from the dotted line up to the bottom of the noise floor, that area right there, the AGC is amplifying that, that band noise. So you're hearing more noise than, than you should or you need to be hearing for, for optimal signal to noise ratio. Now, when you adjust that AGC threshold so that, that the, the, you start hearing that decrease in the noise, what you're doing is you're actually rising that yellow line, that yellow dotted line up. It's a little bit harder to see here because right now that yellow dotted line is at right at the, at the noise floor level. So you can see that in this red shaded area over here on the left, is that the area that the AGC is amplifying the volume of signals is it's not amplifying the volume of noise, but it is amplifying the volume of the signals that are in that AGC gain range or in that what we call the AGC window. And so that's a visual representation of what you're doing. You're actually adjusting the AGC threshold so that you are not amplifying band noise. It's actually pretty straightforward and simple. So we've, uh, we've set the preamp, we've set our AGC threshold. Uh, at this point, we've probably, we're probably 90% there on optimizing our signal to noise ratio for the receiver. And so this is where we, we start using noise mitigation features. And essentially this is a try it. If it makes things better, use it. If it doesn't, don't use it. Um, and so, you know, if you have noise that sounds like, you know, uh, sizzle uh, or frying, bacon frying, uh, then, you know, try turning the noise reduction on. Um, and, um, and once you enable the noise reduction, the noise reduction does have a threshold setting uh, that applies um, uh, the different gains to it. So once you've enabled the noise reduction, you know, start moving the threshold slider up into higher values. And if, um, and if it um, decreases your noise without adversely affecting your signal, then use it. If not, then turn noise reduction off because you don't have the right type of noise that noise reduction is going to work on. The same thing basically goes uh, with, with pulse noise, um, which is mitigated by the noise blanker um, or the um, or wideband noise reduction. Turn the noise blanker on, adjust the threshold up. Uh, you know, if it gets rid of the noise without degrading uh, the, the received signal, that's perfect. Then, then utilize the noise blanker. Um, and if not, turn it off. Um, wideband noise reduction is a little bit different uh, in the fact that there's actually a, a visual indicator to let you know that wideband noise reduction is working. Um, so if you turn wideband noise reduction on, you'll see WNB show up in the top right-hand corner of the, uh, of the um, pan adapter. Uh, and it will either be um, illuminated boldly or it'll be illuminated dimly. And if, if um, WNB shows up dimly, that means that the software is not finding a noise uh, that matches um, where the wideband noise reduction can actually act on it. Um, you may also see uh, WNB flash. It'll flash back and forth, you know, where it's on and off and on and off. In these cases, you'll want to adjust the, um, uh, the, the gain or the, the, the threshold setting of, of wideband noise reduction to see if you can get to a point where uh, a gain setting is going to be on uh, where, where the WNB algorithm is going to be working, you know, uh, primarily all the time. Um, if, if you can't get to that point or it flashes on and off or stays off, turn wideband noise reduction off because it can uh, significantly degrade the signal to noise ratio of a good signal uh, when, the, when the algorithm is trying to work on noise that it just can't find. Um, one other point that I wanted to make is that if you do use these noise reduction features and stuff, is that if you change bands um, or you shut the radio down and you start it up the next day, you'll, you'll want to remember to turn this stuff off uh, because if you leave it on inadvertently, um, then you may be you know, degrading your signal to noise ratio without actually knowing it. Um, 
one of the things that um, that that I have noticed after you know, using the radios for uh, close to 15 years now is that um, is that very rarely do I have the type of noise where I need to use the noise reduction or the noise blanker or the wideband noise blanker. Um, I do have some situations around Christmas uh, where Christmas lights are kind of bother me and, and and I do need some of these features there. But in general, uh, the, the combination of setting the uh, the RF preamp and setting the AGC threshold really you know does exactly what I need to do to to optimize signal to noise ratios. The last step you want to do after you've gone through all the the the, sig the the noise mitigation features is to see if any of the signal enhancement features can work for you. Uh, like I said, you know if you have uh, you know selective hearing loss at particular frequencies, uh, say it's at you know um, a thousand hertz. Uh, you can use the RX uh, equalizer, uh, go into the 1,000 uh, hertz EQ uh, and, and bump the gain up, you know, 4, 5, 6, uh, 8 dB uh, to kind of overcome that. And that should uh, help uh, add back some audio content that your, your ear is, is, uh, is attenuating and can, can help you hear uh, some of these weak signals better. Um, I talked about the automatic uh, uh, peaking filter a little bit uh, before um, with, uh, with, that's used with, only with CW. Uh, you can try turning on the APF, uh, setting the gain settings, and, and see if you like the way that that peaking filter sounds to your ear. Uh, some people like it. Some people don't. Um, the people who like it love it. The people who don't, you know, they just say, well, it doesn't do anything for them. So, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, there are no uh, silver bullets where, you know, everything works for everybody. Uh, but uh, but we did we do have that particular feature in for for CW uh, stereo diversity. You know, if you've got a, a Flex 6700 or a Flex 6600 and you've got two antennas that are diverse in wavelength, which means that the antennas are separated by uh, um, an odd multiple of quarter, quarter wavelength distance apart from one another. And, uh, and if you can change the polarity of the two antennas, where one is vertical polarized, the other one's horizontally polarized, if you can have diverse antenna systems like this, uh, diversity reception it can do wonders, uh, particularly with selective fading. Um, I, I've, I've used it a lot uh, when I've been doing, um, uh, you know, broadcast band DXing uh, down in the AM broadcast band. Uh, where there's a lot of selective fading going on there. And uh, by using, you know, horizontally and vertically polarized antennas, uh, you know, it does make, uh, you know, listening to, you know, to weak uh, AM broadcast stations uh, a lot easier. Uh, the feature is really easy to use in the software. Uh, you enable uh, the diversity feature. Uh, it automatically creates a brand new slice uh, for you. So you have what's called a parent slice and a child slice. Uh, each one of these two slices are, are synchronous. It makes one synchronous receiver, which means when you change the, the frequency of one, it's going to change the frequency of the other. Um, the audio is, is uh, uh, each slice is connected to a separate antenna, and the audio from each one of those slices is panned to the left and right. So the optimal way of, of using diversity reception is with a pair of headphones where you can listen to the, to the left and right. And so what ends up happening is that um, your brain is listening to both receivers at the same time and will automatically prefer the ear <laughs> that it is hearing the signal the best out of. And so your brain is actually doing the digital signal processing uh, to, to pick out the, 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 uh, the receiver, which is, uh, has got the best reception characteristics. And so that basically kind of sums up the, uh, the, the talk that I had here. Um, sorry that I was rambling and, and going on kind of quick. Um, we had a lot of uh, material to cover and, uh, and everything. And, uh, but, uh, I, I did, uh, want to, um, put a slide up here. Uh, there's some links. We have some, uh, some good articles in our help desk. We also have, uh, you know, our, our documentation, our smart SDR, uh, software user guide, uh, just explains all of these um, these features in, in much greater detail than I have gone over uh, on how to use them. I highly recommend uh, going up and, uh, and, and reading up on these uh, as you use these. And, um, and also, you know, utilize our, our help desk articles. Uh, those, are, those are great, uh, great places for, uh, for finding out information. 
And uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this talk. And um, that concludes uh, my uh, my time for, for right now. And I believe that uh, what we've got left here is uh, uh, kind of a Q&A session. So I'll be hanging around for a little bit for a little while and we'll be able to answer your questions online. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the talk. Um, hope you're enjoying the uh, the virtual ham fest and uh, and have a great day. Thank you very much.